All right, so I do want to check now. Are you able to hear me now? All right, perfect. So let's get started with today's session, Gaurish. Uh, I was saying that uh, last Sunday we couldn't have a session because of uh, no attendees being there. Nobody showed up uh, on Sunday. So we'll get started with uh, today's session for follow to what we have covered earlier on. Absolutely, I can understand. Could have been that reason. Now, uh, to get started with today's session, we'll definitely we'll go ahead and uh, do a recap. I would also like to ask you if you have any doubts, queries, if you have any thing to ask across, feel free to put that across in the chat window, please, so that I can go ahead and answer your questions respectively. So do you have any questions, any doubts with regards to whatever you're all right? So you're saying scanning the web page and getting the images, that section couldn't remember. Uh, in which section did we talk about scanning the web page and getting the images? Is, are you talking about the display ads? Because in uh, display ads only, right, it's the Google Display Builder tool. All right, I'll go ahead and take that across again, not a problem. Not an issue. So we'll we'll start with today's we'll start today's session by doing a small recap uh, while looking at how do we really go ahead and get started with creating across a display campaign. All right. Any other questions? Any other doubts you have? Uh, feel free to put that across so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. Anything else which I can help you with? Do you want to go ahead and uh, type it across the topics which you remember from the previous session? So let's do a recap uh, by talking about the topics which you remember from the previous session, so which happened across last Saturday. I'm gonna go ahead and meanwhile open across an AdWords account. All right, give me a second. I'll use another browser for the same. Google Display Network, we have got, all right, so we have gone through. Perfect, and what about the ad extensions? Were the ad extensions covered across in the previous session or last to last? You made some changes in the campaign. All right, I'll just go ahead and log in across to my uh, MCC account, which is my client central. Yes, ad extensions, absolutely, we worked on. Okay, you have added across ad extensions. I'll go ahead and look into them. All right, so is it the same website, uh, Goresh, which, uh, which is the gas one, which uh, you worked upon? Perfect, all right. I'll just go ahead and look into them. Give me a second. All right, so it's loading up. I'll just go ahead and look into this.
So just trying to search for your account. It's uh, by the name of Gaurish. Right, I think that I, I did add across your account to mine. Yes, there you go. All right, I think Gaurish is good enough. I'm clicking on your AdWords account. All right, so AdWords takes a bit of time. It says the web page is slowing down your browser. Would you, would you like to do it? I'm not sure which web browser, which web page is it saying. Okay. So you created across a display campaign as well. Uh, I think the display campaign was being created across by me when while I was working on this. Am I correct? Okay, so the very first thing which you were saying in the search campaign, some small changes you've done, all right. The first thing which I'm looking at is in your search campaign. In your search campaign, I'm gonna look at the ad extensions to begin with. All right, so here is the search campaign which we have selected and now I'm clicking on to add extensions. All right, so you haven't got a call extension set up yet. Starting from the site link extension, it was done. Okay, why is it not showing across? Then we go ahead and click on to all campaigns. And then underneath the all campaigns, I'm starting with site link extension, all right. So your site link extension, let me tell you, uh, you just have got one site link extension being created over here, you at least need four of them. You at least need four site link extension in order to get that enabled. Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna work. Right, it won't show up. Hope that uh, is fine. So you have to make sure that you go ahead and connect four different internal pages of your website with the help of this, with this, with the help of this extension, which is called a siting extension. Right. In other words, it's nothing but it is the internal pages of your website. Okay. Now moving on from site link, we have to go to call out. Callout extension, I hope you remember. Callout extension is all about typing in, shall do it, all right, perfect. Make sure you do that. Okay, you got two uh, callout extensions, uh, two callout extensions, and uh, the very first one says get gas agency now, and start gas business now. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, you've written in the callout extension, the wording as get gas agency now. This very much is a call, uh, call to action kind of a thing where you're asking the person, where you're asking the viewer to go ahead and uh, click onto this and get a gas agency. So in a callout extension, you usually uh, do not type in the words which are sort of uh, uh, instructing the viewer to go ahead and do something because callout extensions are non-clickable stuff. Right. So in the call out extension, since it's a non clickable thing, make sure that you punch in those things in your call out extensions, which are features, which are uh, things which are separating your product from the other competitors product. So that kind of, so I'm just giving you one suggestion. So if you are, if you have got content, which says get gas agency now, start a want in agency, uh, see again, want in agency uh, and all those things probably is not a, product feature, maybe uh, gas at lower prices, gas is delivered at home, or I mean, I'm just giving an example, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what are the features of your product, 
a feature of your product where you're not asking the visitor to go ahead and do something, do something in the sense uh, to do an action, to perform an action and so forth. All right, so this is a review which I'm giving you from the features, absolutely features to be put in a class. Now structured snippet extensions are, are also to do with, uh, what do you say, the features only or anything which is related to your brand. So it says amenities and you have entered amenities and it's been disapproved. All right. Now, there could have been a reason why Google AdWords would have disapproved it. Probably you might have got into your email. All right. You might have got uh, an email which would have mentioned that why this structured snippet extension has been disapproved. Have you, have you received any email? Do you want to open that across? Sure, please do check that. And once you check, uh, do post the email here as well. Well, somehow uh, there was just a drop for a second. Uh, are you able to hear me now? Are you? Can you hear me? Can you uh, see my screen? Koresh, can you just confirm because there was a drop right as of a while back? All right, perfect. Okay, once you check the email, let me know. All right, so uh, saying that maybe due to schedule ended, I'm not sure, uh, could be or could be not, but there are lesser chances that the structured snippet can get a disapproved because of uh, you know the schedule being there. Uh, else, if that could have been the logic, it could have been the other ad extensions also not getting approved. So just try to check. I'm 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 waiting. I'm waiting for another minute or so. Just check into your email if you've received any emails talking about the disapproval reason. Or it says incorrect structures. So you have the disapproval reason being mentioned over here. It says incorrect structured snippet value. All right. So it says the punctuation and symbols in the snippet text that serve no purpose other than All right, the reason for structured snippet disapproval, it says structured snippet allow advertisers to describe features of a specific product or describe the, describe the range of product or services their business offers. Structured snippets are subject to standard AdWords policies and requirement belows. Well, there could have been some repetition or punctuation and symbols uh, in the snippet text that serve no purpose other than to draw the attention. All right. Something like exclamation mark, punctuation at the beginning of the text, adding this, you know, arrow symbol, emotions and so forth. These are not allowed. This could be another reason or having multiple items in your in, in value. So what it says is entering more than one item in each value. Something for a reason, for, for an example, it says adding a comma separated list into one field, putting two related items in one value field. So if you got, uh, you know, one thing then separated with a comma and then another one, it is not allowed. So add a new field for every item, but don't use the comma, comma thing in structured snippet. And also it says, uh, do not use a cross promotional text in value. Now these are small, little, small little things guys, uh, small little thing, uh, Goresh about uh, things which not, okay, comma could have been a reason. And it says amenities in structured snippets, which says values that do not list useful features or facilities of a building or a place. All right, there are examples for that also. It says, uh, 
if you have chosen amenities, let's say, the right example for using this is like ski storage, swimming pool, restaurant, or amenities like Wi-Fi, breakfast, pool, gym, and spa. But uh, if you're using, let's say, rated most comfortable, 100% satisfaction guarantee, these are not. So precisely just the features, all right, place also there. Right, so I hope you've understood what exactly is not place in the comma or the mistake, all right. So that's good that you've understood this. All right, since we are talking about it, let's hear from them. What else, what other thing they're not uh, liking? So it says values that are not actual brands offered by the advertiser. Description of number of brands offered by the advertiser is also not allowed. So if you're chosen, if you're chosen brands as the structured snippet, make sure the different brands are being chosen. So let's say Nest, Nexus, Chromebook, what are different uh, brands name? But if you have a certain description of the number of brands offered by the advertiser, that's not allowed. It says over 200 brand names, same on brand names, cheap uh, Nest, new Nexus phone, exclusive Chromecast. So these are not the things which are approved. Also, it says if you are using across the course section, the value that do not list specific classes, educational provider or that promote entire degree program. So if, let's say the right approach is using courses uh, and then what all different courses are there? Linear, algebra, creating, writing, data structures. All right. This is allowed in this one, which is MBA, M MED, BS. These are not allowed because these are the short forms. It says values that do not list specific classes. These are specific classes. Education provide offers on that promote entire degree programs. So if you have to type in, you have to type in masters in business administration. You have to type in masters in education. You have to type in bachelors in science instead of typing in uh, just MBA, MED, and so forth. The short forms. All right. Another example with degree programs. Let's say you're typing across accounting, biology, psychology is allowed, but uh, typing in degree programs with its. Uh, Duration, which is two years, four year, masters, associates, and so forth, these are not allowed. Or right, there are furthermore quite many others, which could be a reason. So I hope we have understood in brief uh, what things are allowed in the structured snippets and what are what are allowed and what are not allowed. Perfect. Now the other one is a call extension over here. What we saw a while back with call extension. Okay, we okay that for probably that point of time it would have right. Yes, let me know your query. The drop down list do not show this one. Restructured. Do, do you want me to uh, unmute you, Gorish? If you're having trouble, I mean, since you're the only one today, I can go ahead and unmute you if you wish to, and you can let me know your question. You're saying the drop down list does not show the structure, the snippet. So, if I are you talking about the structured snippet extension only? All right, I'll just unmute you. Perfect. All right, so I've gone ahead and unmuted you. Hello. Yeah, hi, Gorish. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, hi. Uh, query is when while editing the structure snippet option, the under the heading option. One second. Under the heading also. Uh, let if, me if I want to edit this amenities option. Okay, this. So now you cannot edit this because it's been uh, uh, disapproved. That's why it's not coming across as uh, I think no, that is okay. But uh, under that uh, drop down list, amenities, brands, these are the options, right? And what I want to put is not available there. So, oh. is it possible to put something else? Create you cannot create something else. So, that's okay. where, yeah. So, now you can uh, what you have already got got this this selected, or okay, now you can edit it from here. Okay, now the edit option is coming. Yeah, right. And okay, comma, yeah. thing which okay, really created a bad problem. 
and now you're saying thing which you want is not available so instead of amenities uh you want something else which is not visible well google yeah. has its own google has its own uh, you know predefined predefined uh, categories you can say which you cannot go ahead and create anything of your own other than things that's what i can see uh yes so can i put on the brand name yes you can so you can have the brand and it does show the name so you can have brand it's available go gas in the brand name yes you can have the brand value 1 the brand name number 1 brand name number 2 brand name number 3 yeah this way you can do that perfect so we want we want to uh, change that right away all right so I'll, i'll save this you can change it uh, so it, it is asking me to go ahead and uh, so let me know uh, just be a bit fast what is the first brand second brand and the third brand which we want me to type in i'm going to put that up so it will not let me allow me to save that okay you've got only one brand and in that case uh, it's not going to let us go move let us move further three items is at least uh, we do need So instead of brands, do you think something else will make sense? The product name, amenities, brands, courses, insurance, models, service types, product names. So you can have types, maybe. Type is one. Models. Now you can type in a couple of product names in underneath the model. All right, so you got okay product the uh, product types. Okay, then you can put LPG and so forth. Then you can have in that case. Okay, that I think the types would make sense. So we can have LPG as one. What is the other one? The second and the third. go gas and service catalog so got lpg as one and packaged lpg cylinder all right so let's see if this one this should not have any problem in terms of getting uh, approved and so far that's what i feel and we've got a couple of these being mentioned click me to save all right so here we go the structured snippet is now pending for review so we are done with this cycling we saw we need at least four of them called extensions we understood that the overall uh great feature something which is separates with some separates your product from the others we go ahead and type that in underneath call out extension in the structured snippet we saw that there was something there were few snippets few extensions which were not uh, which were not approved and we saw the reasons for the disapproval and as per that overall policies we have changed that and then comes in call extension in the call extension we have got uh, one of the extensions being uh mentioned one of the phone number and it's been approved and if you can see when we go to this bubble it shows uh that the conversions are going to be counted across we'll always get to know how many people have actually called up how many people actually called up uh once they clicked onto this extension all right so that numbers will come across over over here every single call will be counted as a conversion also what your uh, we can see is that the scheduling part 10 am to 7 pm you have done and this is all approved so that's fine that's good call extension okay now message extension is something which i uh, understood uh, th- like i told you this is a new extension guys new extension uh, gorish message extension is very similar to a call extension in call extension if somebody clicks on the call button a call goes through a 
a call, uh, you know, automatically a call goes to, to the advertiser's phone number, which is mentioned in the message extension or a SMS, a predefined templated SMS will go. So if somebody will click onto a message extension. Let me show you how a message extension looks like on a, uh, on a search text ad. All right. So the way call extension appears with a call button, similarly message extension comes across with a small, uh, I would say a bubble kind of a thing. That bubble thing is, okay, this is not Google. Let's put in, type it across on google.com. All right, so message extension looks like this. So on a mobile phone, a message extension, when if it's applicable to a particular search text ad, very similar to call extension, it, uh, it does the similar kind of stuff. It's just that the communication method would be different. So call extension comes with a call button call now button, the message extension comes with a text button, a bubble kind of a thing. The moment somebody will click onto this, a specific uh, templated uh, message SMS will go into the SMS inbox. All right, in the inbox of the advertiser's phone, which have been connected. So let me show you how it is. Okay, here you go. As you can see, this particular stuff actually shows that As you can see, it says, this particular picture shows that if somebody has typed in a specific keyword for which the ad is appearing, and then there is a, a call extension and there is a message extension, both of them, we may put contact number and address. Well, address absolutely comes in the location extension as we understood Gaurish. And uh, so you can have phone number also, you can have uh, for the call extension. So you can have a call extension, message extension, and also the address and the location extension. So all the three could come in together. As you can see in this particular example, we have got citing extensions also being there. And as you can see there is this call out extension. So we've got call out extension, site link extensions, four of them, and also the call extension is coming, site link, call out, and call extension, and the third one, the, the last one, which is the third one, fourth one, sorry, is a message extension and it says along with the message bubble it says got a question send us a text the moment somebody will click onto this automatically a templated sms will go into the inbox of advertisers phone number right it, so templated uh, statement says hi i'm interested in discussing your web design services please text me back so with this what's happening you have got the phone number you have got the phone number of the person who has actually clicked onto it. This extension is also available across on a mobile phone. So today if I have seen this ad, okay, I have typed in blue frontier as a search term in the search engine bar of my phone. All right. And I've clicked onto this particular message extension tab. There will be a certain SMS price, which is the usual tariff, which I have to pay usual amount which my telephone operator will charge me, same amount have, I'm going to be charged across for this for SMS and an SMS will go from this particular mobile phone to the mobile phone of the advertiser. What's happening, advertiser is this way able to get across the phone number of all those people who have clicked onto the message tab. So leads are getting built up. You know, you've, start, you've started getting across the uh, database of people who are interested okay so let's go ahead and create this also i saw this and i uh what, you know i understood what exactly is this this is the new version new thing so i'm clicking on the plus extension underneath the message extension 
and let's select the campaign for which we have to create this. So the message, is the, first of all, the campaign for which we have to create this is this one. The search campaign basically. Now it says select the message extension or create a new message extension. So I'm clicking on to plus new message extension. And uh, all right, so let me know what all things do we need to type in across over here in the business name, the phone number, and what all uh, text do we want to be appearing right next to the extension and also the, the message which will go to you in, or maybe you as in the advertiser in your phone number, in your phone's inbox. So starting from the business name, I think that's go gas. What do I need to type in over here? Let's create this, all right. And the text phone number, it has to be India, I believe so, right. So I'll first of all select the country, which is India, and let me know the phone number too. All right, double seven, double two, zero, five, one, three, zero, seven. And then the extension text, uh, interested in, so maybe something like, uh, text us for more information or interested to know more, text us, something like this. Or text us for, this I'm typing it across text us for more information, that's the one. That's the wording which I've typed in. Now, what exactly we need in the message? Now, it can be like, I would like to know more about. Know more about your gas services, about your co-gas product. All right, so that's the one which I've typed in. So in, whenever you'll receive across an SMS on this phone number, it will come across as this. I would like to know more about GoGas products and there can be scheduling being done for this part also. I'm clicking on to save, I'm not doing any scheduling for this. And your message extension has been created. All right, so just like that, just like the call extension, we've got the message extension, it's pending for review. And the next one is the, Affiliate location extension, all right, so I am new to this also, I'm not sure. We can go ahead and uh, look for this. Affiliate location extensions haven't been added to the account. And let's see what exactly I'll be, this is really talking about. So we'll just check that. Or it says if you sell your products through retail chains, affiliate location extensions can help you reach customers when they're deciding what and where to buy. Affiliate location extension help people find nearby stores that sell your products. Okay, so if you have other people, you've got a channel basically through which you're selling across your product. You've got various other retail chains who are selling your products, or you've got affiliates, resellers in the sense, then you use this and it says this, Article describes affiliate location extension for, for instruction on how to set them up. Jump to use affiliate extension. And it says, here's how affiliate location extension could help you with new customers. If someone searches on Google for a product, your ad shows with your affiliate location extension. The person sees the nearest store that sells your product, okay? Either as an address or as on the map. On the mobile, the person can tap to the get directions to the store. The person heads right. Okay, now this is useful, what I can see and understand. This is also a new one. Uh, oh yes, if you have channel partners, Gorish, you can, you can punch in those. Uh, do you have channel partners who are selling in your product? It says if you're a manufacturer who sells products through major retail chains. Okay, that's great, then let's create this. It says if you are a manufacturer who sells products through major retail chains, you can use affiliate location extensions to help people find nearby stores to that sell your products. If you want to advertise your own business location, use location extension. So if you have to promote your own main office, main particular center, then it's the location extension. But affiliate location extension is for those channel partners, those places from other various different places who are doing a reselling, you can say, or selling across your products. 
reselling could be or direct selling could be if you have multiple locations. It says to set up an affiliate location extension in AdWords, you simply add the extension and specify the retail chains where your products are sold and we'll take care of the rest in contrast to standard location extension, affiliate location extension don't require you to link to a Google business account. All right, absolutely, this is a great one. So we saw that location extension needs to be set up across uh, with the help of a Google business account only. Until unless you do not have a Google business set up, you cannot get onto affiliate location or to location extension, but with affiliate location extension, that's not the case, it says. Let us also do a small search on to this that how an affiliate location extension really looks like. Just give me a second. It's affiliate location extension. All right, so let's look at this. Let's click onto the images. Okay, so as you can see, the way it's gonna look like is like this. So if somebody is typing in Sony TV, now Sony also sells across, uh, is a product, is a brand basically, which has got multiple channel partners. And here it says, see three retailers near the place, near this place from wherever you know, this particular person might be searching for this near Palo Alto and so forth. Another one is, okay, it's this. All right, let's have a look at the, some more, let's look at some more uh, examples. Okay, this says, uh, Available at 7-Eleven in Denver, all right? So it's talking with this location which is nearby, but I'm just trying to understand, is it gonna detect, is the Google AdWords gonna detect that where is the person really searching from and he is being uh, you know, prescribed a nearby location on its own, will that particular work will be done by Google? I'm just trying to understand that. Because if I am residing across, let's say in New Delhi, I should be shown across, let's say I'm residing in West Delhi, okay? Now the place is nearby me, I mean, I should be given across options, uh, affiliate locations, basically locations where I can buy this product, which, which is nearby my location. And let's say, Paresh, you are in Hyderabad, in one of the regions of Hyderabad, I'm just, or maybe you're in Bangalore, you're in Kor Mangala, will you get across, uh, you know, channel partners near the core Mangala only. Uh, just trying to understand this. Let's read a bit more. It says use affiliate location and we can go ahead and uh, search for it onto YouTube also. Let's, let's try to create this first, okay? You have got the information about your F, your channel partners, right? So on the basis of this, let's create one. Affiliate location extension, I'm clicking onto plus new extension. And what we'll do, we can go ahead and uh, enter across all our affiliates, all our locations from where this is getting shown, sold across. Okay, uh, I think this is available only for United States, is that so? Because it says country US and it's not even editable. So the names of the general retailers are mentioned over here. So if you're selling across your stuff. So now this settings is not gonna be taken across from my account. It's basically from your account only, it's being taken, it, it takes. So my MCC account, do you wanna try that your end? Uh, Gorish, if you wanna open this extension stuff. So I don't think it's taking, uh, it's showing US just because of 
my main account, my MCC account being from US. My actually main you, uh, MCC account is rather Canadian. So it's, I have a Canadian account. So it should show Canada in that case. But we want to, let's, let's try to be confirmed. And uh, you can open that at your end and let me know. Meanwhile, I'll just go ahead and search for a specific video. Not active, same view. So are you also getting United States? Is that what? Oh, okay. So let's just see what exactly affiliate location extension. Seems like, okay, this is available only for uh, United States. All right, so I don't see even any uh, video talking about affiliate location extension, every specific, if I'm searching for affiliate location extension onto YouTube, all the, web, all the videos which I'm getting across are related to location extension only, not affiliate location extension. So I believe now this is not applicable for India as of now, so we can leave that part as of now. Let's click on to cancel. So we don't have, sure, please go ahead with your uh, query, Goresh. All right, so I can see Chaitanya has also joined in. And okay, Chaitanya is saying US only. Yes, absolutely. And Goresh says, my account is created for sample campaign. Yes. And it's saying my account is created for sample campaign. If I added Pune as a base location, okay. but I cannot use it in as a headquarter in Nagpur. So uh, what exactly are you trying to? So underneath the location uh, targeting, underneath the location targeting, you do mention all of these things, right? So then it says for me, Hyderabad and not activated other countries on the US. So you're saying you want to add Pune and Nagpur, both the locations or what is the overall objective like? So saying it asks for email ID location, email ID as a business. All right, uh, I think you are unmute. Do you want to go ahead and uh, talk more about it? I'm just probably not able to uh, get across what the question is like. So Goresh, you're already on unmute. Yeah. Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think uh, this account, uh, I, I have to register this as a business account then only I'll be able to add this uh, location extension. Oh yes, location extension I did tell you the other day that uh, you have to go ahead and first of all, submit across your I business. have to activate that business, business account. Yes, absolutely. This, this is something I did tell you in the previous session that to get across your yeah, business right. extension, you have to first do a step one, which is to register your business with Google Business uh, Product. And which is an easy task. All you have to do is you have to just follow the uh, overall steps which it will give you automatically. One after another, keep asking you details with regards to your business, the name, working on product names, you know, across the address. And it will ask you to go ahead and mark the location as a bubble thing within the entire map. Once you do this, once you submit all that stuff, uh, what, what it means is that you have submitted your application you will receive, you will receive across an email. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and mute you now. 
So you will be receiving across an email, sort of not an email, a post mail basically, post mail from uh, Google saying that uh, this is the, these are the, uh, what do you say, verification code, this is the verification code and for that very purpose you have to go ahead and, uh, I mean, you have to take this verification code and punch in back in your Google business account. Once you're done, then only you can go ahead and start with the location extension. That is absolutely correct. Right, so, so what I've done, I've clicked on to add a single location. Underneath Google business, I've selected an option called add a single location and that's how you really go ahead and put that across. Right, so we did understand this in the previous session also. Let me know if in case there is any query related to that furthermore. Any follow-up question, any further query related to this? All right. Okay, I hope uh, Chitane, you also got that. Any questions you have, you can always type that across. And uh, you're saying yes, for uh, yes means you're good or yes means you have a question. If you have a question, you can type that across also. You can, I mean, you can let me know, that'd be great. I am going, or you have a query, sure, please go ahead and ask me your query. All right, so it says for every business project, I have to create separate Google business account. Yes, the answer is yes for that. For every different business project, you have to go ahead and create across a separate Google business account. You can uh, you know, submit across in one Google business account, but uh, that won't be really beneficial because at the end of the day, if your client, let's say your client asks you to go ahead and uh, pass on the admin rights, okay? pass on the admin rights to them, then you can just straight away go ahead and share across the username and password for that Google account. You can still go ahead and multiply, oh sorry, uh, add on multiple businesses in the in one single Google business. So option is there for sure, Gaurish, but the recommended thing is to go ahead and connect across all your, uh, uh, what do you say, business account from different Google business uh, listing and so forth. So that's the overall suggestion. So make it make it uh, do on different ones rather than going ahead and doing it one, which is allowed but not recommended because I've, I've given you the reason behind that. Because all your clients are not related to each other. Maybe if you have got four or five different, let's say website of uh, which, uh, which are owned by a single corporation or single company, then you can do so. All right, any further questions you have, feel free to put that across again. Uh, you, you, we have understood the message extension, we've understood location, and then we've understood, now it's clear, perfect. We have understood the affiliate location, which cannot be created for this. Now, one more uh, extension, which was a new extension that's been introduced by Google, and that's called price extension. Let me show you how a price extension really looks like. Even this is something which I've got to know pretty recently and Chitanya Six Nick on that day I asked about college names on top of the page that are coming based on Google business listed Google, uh, listed colleges. Google showing the best listed colleges. Yes. So that was the organic way uh, Chitanya. Through the overall uh, what do you say to the organic listings only to the uh, search engine algorithm only the Google business, business listings were being ranked across with an image being there. So that was that is true. But what the other things, what exactly you have to do in order to get your uh, business up there in those uh, topmost listing with the image and so forth, uh, there is nothing different which you have to do, which you are doing it as of now also, right? With regards to SEO. Whatever things we have worked across, we have uh, studied across in the SEO, those things, those same things have to be uh, performed across. And if your Google business listing in your website is performed, is, is uh, doing good in that, then automatically 
it will come up on the top right your your overall website will also come on the top and so forth all right so nothing different has to be done so i read about this and talking about the price extension now All right, so let me show you how a price extension is gonna look like. Oops. So the price of your product comes up with the price extension. Let me just show you. And these are also created what, with the objective of improving the click-through rate and improving the quality score at the end of the day. All right, so there are different products with different prices. For your website, you get to see it like this. Or maybe like this. So the product names are being mentioned. They are clickable and somebody will click onto them. Um, the exact product web page will open up. All right. Oh, I think this is much clearer option. This is much more clear. So if somebody is typing in across spa on a mobile phone, it, it does show across the call button before the call extension. Plus it's, it's showing across the different things which are done at this specific, uh, you know, spa center. So it does offer skincare, which is for $68 for massage. It's $60 for crabs and baths. It's 118. So let's just go ahead and uh, read more about it. This is a pretty much new extension, which uh, I also, you know, got myself educated on it recently. Let's read a bit about it and then we move further. But, all right, so it's saying price extensions can add more value to your search network text ads by giving you a bigger showcase for your services and range of products and by linking people directly to what interests them to your site. It says price extensions appear below your text ad, right? Underneath the text ads only, it comes on desktop and mobile both. And it says, and give you more space to tell people details about what your business offers. They show uh, as a set of set, set of up to eight cards that people can view to see different options and prices. So up till eight. And it says from your price menu, people can go directly to the item that interests them or to your site and so forth. This also says this article explains the advantages of using price extensions and you can, for instructions, you can go ahead and do them. It also says before you begin, price extensions may show on both desktop and mobile, we, are, we understood. And price extensions link directly to your site. So it's important to make sure your site is optimized for both the devices, mobile and the uh, desktop. And you can learn how to create them. And it's available across in different languages and currencies. For which one it's available, that's also right, given up over here. Given, And then it says example. So let's try to understand uh, more about this from an example. The example is it says, let's say you own a hair salon. All right, that's what we just saw a while back. You, you own a hair salon and you could add more generic price extensions uh, like for haircut, hair coloring and treatments to campaigns with more general keywords or you could add extensions to more targeted ad groups. So your hair color ad group might include extensions like partial color, full color and full color plus conditioning, all right. So this is a great one guys. At the ad group level, you're creating across this ad extension and let's say one of your ad group name is uh, just hair color, okay. Uh, underneath hair color also there are several sub products which you're offering you know that's not, not only one kind of a hair color which you do you do partial hair color you do full hair color you do full color plus conditioning so you mention all three of them and then you mention the uh, prices for those keywords which are connected to this ad group named hair color right 
Now, these extensions let uh, give people a sense of breadth of range of what products he offers and what price extension do. They, so here are the free, a few reasons. Uh, it makes shortcuts to conversion increase the impacts and service or rankings and so forth. All right, easily upgraded and so forth. All right, that's good. In terms of billing, also, it's on a per click basis. The cost of a click on a price extension equals the cost of a click on the click on the title or display URL of the ad. It shows with so price extension clicks are charged when a person clicks on any of the price extension items. However, clicks on the mobile drop downs to expand the carousel are not charged. All right. So mobile, it's not. Whereas price extension gives people more opportunities to click, but you won't be charged for more than two clicks per impression. For one impression, there are more 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 than two clicks. It won't get charged because uh, it might be really uh, look as if uh, you know one person is doing the clicks again and again and again. It is not going to deplete your budget. It will only be charged only two times. Plus, if someone quickly comes, clicks on your uh, clicks on more than one link while viewing an ad, this may be treated as a duplicate or invalid link, and you won't get charged for the second click. Also, guys, that's what Google has to say. And here is what you should do in order to get that created right for your service category, service tires. Let's say your other services, your product. Your product categories, your neighborhoods, location, events, and brands, and so forth. Let's try to create one. Price extension, clicking on the plus extension, guys, and let's select the campaign first. Campaign for which we have to create this. And here's the one, the search one. All right, you, you did create it. And once you selected this campaign, let's click on to done. And that's great, Chaitanya. Good to know that. All right, so as for the specific campaign, the price extension has to be created. We can go ahead and uh, even uh, get this uh, decide across on the devices on which it will be shown. Do we want to show it across only on mobile, mobile devices or mobile and uh, desktop and tablet devices only or all the devices? We can pick and choose that also. Plus, all right, so. I'm just, I have to do it again. All right, so let's create one. It's called new price extension. All right, so it says what language, what sort of a type, so is it about a different brands for different prices which you're selling? If you've got events, location, so in this go gas example, what should we take? Neighborhoods, product category. So you've got different product categories for different pricing. You've got different product tires. You've got various different services, service tires, services, and so forth. A brand would do. Uh, all right, we're just trying to uh, Gaurish should be the better person also to help, help us there. So, Chaitanya, great thanks for uh, doing the suggestion. Shall we go for brands? Ooh. Right, so Gaurish, you can let us know what options shall we select. Uh, with regards to the okay, but so we have only one brand at the moment. Or right, do you want us to product tires or product categories? I think you were telling. So, what all different things are there with different pricing? So, I think product categories. So, you can use categories absolutely. Yes. So, I think the LPG cylinder is one thing which you said. Currency in this case, it's going to be INR. All right, so the currency is INR and the price qualifier, it says, uh, what do you really want? Do you want the pricing to be mentioned as from such and such, or do you want pricing to be mentioned up till this much price? What do you really want and what pricing, what items 
shall we write in right the description so no qualifier for this one okay and we have to give final url for each and every different product for a different pricing right so you can let me know the header the description the price and also the final url the url of that specific product which for which uh, you know the pricing is going to be mentioned up over here and the last thing is going to be the mobile final url if in case you have a mobile uh, version of your website as a separate one so do you uh, quickly want to add that across for ish uh, shall i give you the okay difference page out domain at the moment for each product we do not have different all right so we should not create this across as of now for your campaign i hope you understood the concept it's something uh different product line okay okay so i hope you got the concept you can go ahead and create them across on your own what exactly the concept is like and how do you get to get into this particular path of price extension so i'm going ahead and clicking on to cancel you can go ahead and create that at any given point of time all right so what we have understood we have understood check with so then again go to my account all right oh yeah sure absolutely just give me a second i can go to your account too All right, so Chitanya, was your account being connected to my, my client central account? I'm just trying to search for it. Okay, it was not being connected. So what I can do, I can first of all, you have to let me know. Can you let me know the 10 digits ID for your AdWords account? I can go ahead and open that and then send you across an invitation which you can accept. All right, thank you so much. Then I'll just go ahead and send in your request from my Google AdWords. And you'll get across an invitation within your email box. And I'll also show you if you do not get an email box, email into your email box, how can you accept that? We'll tell you that as well. All right, so it's loading up. Just give me a second. Okay, this is not the one. This is the one. It's taking a bit of time, quite a bit of time to upload. Not sure what's happening over here. So Google AdWords does take in some time in certain intervals. All right, here you go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect across an existing account to the New York's account. All right, so I'm clicking on the plus new account and then clicking on to link existing account, okay? So I've clicked on to link existing account, got the customer ID being mentioned over here. The customer ID, the 10 digit ID of uh, Chaitanya's Google AdWords account. I'm clicking on to continue and I'm typing in the name by which I'm gonna be uh, recalling this at a later stage.
All right, so we got the name being mentioned and I'm sending across an approval. So Chitane, you would have to check in across your email box. You are there, you would have got across an invitation. You just have to go ahead and click on to accept. Either you do it this way or I can let you know what is the other procedure if you do not get across an email. So first look at the email and then then we'll guide you on the next steps on how to accept the this particular linkage of your account with my MCC account. Let me know if you have received the email, Chaitanya. If in case not, what you have to do is you have to go to the gear icon, click onto the account settings, All right, receive that, perfect. And are you able to accept that also? The request. All right, so I hope you must have accepted it. If not, you're not able to accept it from that side. I'm saying it again, you go to the gear icon and then click on to linked accounts, sorry, account settings. And the moment we clicked onto the account settings, these options on the left hand side will come across. You have to select then after that step, the drop down number two, which is linked accounts or account access on the top, sorry. So you have to click onto account access, all right? So I'm saying it again, you click onto the gear icon, go onto account settings, and then on, on the account settings tab, which will come on the left, click onto account access. The moment you will click onto account access, it will show, it will show the email address, which has sent you an email, and it shows, do you want to accept that, or do you want to reject that? So you can accept that. Let me know once you have accepted the invitation from my account, so then, the AdWords accounts get linked across. So with my internet, uh, my, my agency's account, my agency account is gonna be connected with your individual Google AdWords account. All I would be, I mean, I would be able to go ahead and check in across your account, make changes to it, review your account and then let you know where have you gone right, where have you gone wrong, what are the things that you need to improve upon and so forth without asking for your accounts, um, without asking for your accounts overall uh, username and password. Accepted, perfect. Let me just go back to my Google AdWords account. All right, so Chitane, I'm typing in your name. That's the name through which I have added. All right, so I have your account right up over here. All right, and let me know Chitanya, what exactly do you want me to look at within your account? All right, so you've got three campaigns up. What I can see, you've got uh, 
one search and two display campaigns being created, right? The BBS search campaign. All right, so I should go ahead and click onto the BBS search campaign. All right, so you have run the campaign too. Perfect, that's good. And you've got some, two days you ran the campaign. And oh, did I uh, give you, Chaitanya, the, uh, what do you say, the 200, 2,000 rupees uh, coupon? Was that being sent? Well, I think I sh shared the link with you, right? Yeah, so you've got, okay, you haven't got that. Let me just go ahead and sh share that part with you. Also, let me know your questions. All right, so guys, you were not being shared across that. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, but your, uh, what do you say? The certifications were being given, right? To you from my side the certifications you got right chaitanya and gorish i can see we've got aman also have joined in gorish you haven't got the gorish is okay yes for the certification right and chaitanya i believe you also saw the certifications i hope you saw the certifications which i have provided you and with regards to the promotional credit, okay, perfect, Gaurish and Chaitanya for acknowledging that. I'm clicking on with this part, get started with promotion. Okay, so this is actually the number which you have to call on. Chaitanya, you would have to call up on this number which is 1800 419 on Monday. During the working hours, you have to call up on this number and ask for that. Otherwise, I had gone ahead and look for it, another resource. Just give me one second. I'm going to look for that Google AdWords coupon, which I received from another source. I bookmarked that. All right, so then it's I've utilized your one coupon. Okay, if you already utilized, then it's good. Then you won't be able to get another one. All right, so here is the one with, through which you can get that. Okay, so I've got, I've got the, so let me just go ahead and give it to you. Uh, so I believe, uh, Gorish, this is your email address for which, from which you're doing, right? The technique, solution, and so forth. That's the one, right? Perfect. Now, Google will contact you with the offer code. Or right, it says technique, T E K N I K, a solution at gmail.com. Is this the one? Then why is it saying please enter a valid one? So. Just have a look at the email address. Maybe additional space at the end. All right, so now you will have to go ahead and contact them and you will get an email. So Garish, what will, what will happen now, you will get across an email uh, with, with a 2000 AdWords coupon, okay? You will get across an email plus do call upon this number, that's the other thing. All right, let me know your question. I'm sorry, Chaitanya, I moved ahead, moved away from your account. So you had a question, so you have run the campaign for two days. Do you want, do you want, do you want me to do an overall review of this or any question you have in particular, you can ask for that first. Or I can see your bid has been mentioned as 
39 rupees a review all right so what we can do we can definitely go for a review uh, once we're done with this ad extension part uh, okay I'll, I'll look into your ad extensions also okay, we started uh, it's been almost one and a half hours we started so time for a break we can go for a 20 minutes break and then after the break we'll go ahead and do the overall review of your account also so I've, I've done a small review for Gaurish's account and Chaitanya, your account would be the next one which I'll go ahead and review. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put myself onto mute for 20 minutes and then we meet after the break. All right, perfect.
All right, so let's get started after break. Just trying to check if you guys can hear me. Please do acknowledge in the chat window if you can hear me. Perfect. Thank you, Chetan, and thank you, Aman, for acknowledging. Let's move further. So I was uh, doing a review of a couple of uh, accounts, a couple of AdWords accounts, right? So I'll just go ahead and uh, open one of them. So let's, let's complete one of the campaigns, one of the accounts. Mm. Let me just see which one. Am I on? All right, so uh, shall I complete the Goresh account first and then come onto your account, Chaitanya? Would that be fine? Because we were already onto it and there were a few things left. All right, so Goresh, I'm opening across your, okay, Goresh, are you there? Just trying to check, Goresh. Uh, acknowledge in the chat window, please. I don't think he's here. Oh, he is. Okay, perfect. So I'm opening across your account first. Uh, first in the sense I mean that was opened a while back only. And I'm going to uh, be done with that and then we'll jump on to Chaitanya's account and the other queries you had, you guys have. All right, so this is Koresh's account, and we were actually on to the ad extensions. All right, so it's opening up. Just give a few more seconds for this to open up. All right, so we were looking at the ad extensions and uh, quite many ad extensions were being reviewed to begin with. And uh, we were just about to create a cost price extensions. We go ahead and create one. So clicking on the plus new and selecting the campaign for which we want to create it. So the display campaign, we're going ahead and clicking on the done. All right, so there you go. It says uh, use the campaign for price extension and click on to plus new price extension. So we're clicking on to plus new price extension to begin with. Oh, okay. I, okay. Now I recall. So, okay. There, uh, we, we did understand that. Okay. The overall part price extension part is covered. It's been understood that we don't have the data right now. As of now, we don't have the data. That's what we agreed upon. So price extension was covered. I remember that. And the other part, the other ad extension was, uh, app extension. So app extension, I hope that is clear that comes in across for app extension comes in across for mobile app promotion and that is only allowed for mobile devices. So for mobile devices, uh, you can get to see that. All right, I hope, yes, it was done. And then uh, review extensions also was being done. Absolutely, app extension, the example which we took was the Bank of America. Review extension, if you've got any review being given across by any other uh, by, by your customers on a different website, you can take that review, right? You can take that review and post that across. Okay, just give me a second, uh, there's some issues, just hold on for a second. I'm gonna be on mute for a second.
or right, so I'm on the unmute note. The last part, guys, is the automated extensions report. Even this is a new extension which I'm not aware of. And it says there you are know, automated extension statistics for the selected date range. We look into that later. So uh, if you want me to go ahead and still look into it, what exactly is this? So this is pretty much also a new extension, guys. Maybe uh, launched across in the last um, 10, 15 days only. It's called automated extensions report. Let me just go ahead and uh, review more about it. Does it say learn more about it? Not really. Automated extensions options, it says advanced. So show all automated extensions available for this. So it says automated extensions report, automated extensions report. All right, so I'm just typing that across and let's see what exactly uh, Google has to say about it. All right, so I've got my Yahoo, somehow my search, default search engine has got changed. All right, so after the ad extensions, what all uh, things, Koresh, do you really want me to have a look at? Uh, yeah, this is not coming up. Mm. Anything specific, otherwise I'll go ahead and have a look at the, your ads, have a look at your other things, your campaign settings. Automated ad extensions report, which is a new one. Oops, oops, oops. It has to be a. All right, it says measure the ad extension performance. Okay, so I believe this is all about uh, the reporting part only. And Chaitanya says automated ad extensions improve the quality of your ad by adding additional information about your business to it, like links to your website or changing its format. AdWords adds automated ad extensions to your text ads when it predicts that. The extensions will improve your ads performance, no setup. Okay, so there is no setup required for this. It's just that it comes on its own and the overall purpose is to improve across the quality score. This is being, uh, this is something guys which we can understand from this uh, text being pasted across in the chat window by Chaitanya. Thanks so much Chaitanya for sharing that. Let's have a look at the uh, way automated extensions uh, gets visible on the screen. So as it says, there is no setup required, but let's have a look at uh, the way these automated extensions really uh, come up across, the extensions which are coming up on its own. All right, so. There seems to be some, so Google AdWords always create uh, a script to be run across and on the ball because of that script, these things really come in a bit slower. Uh, okay, you can see in this image, it's coming in a bit blurry image. Okay, now it's perfect. Now this one shows this extension, as we can see it shows how many followers are there on Google Plus. So what we can see, uh, if you have good, uh, you know, presence on Google Plus page for your website, for your business, that can be picked up automatically. This we can understand. And all right, also, uh, as you can see, this particular one, this particular image is also showing the automated ad extension. And this, this particular line, which says you have visited this site seven times and last visit you had, was on this. So this is actually very much uh, customized for every single person who comes onto an ad. So if you've been to a specific web page good number of times in the past, automated ad extension comes in and it lets that specific user know that you've been onto this website this many times, these many times. So this is another example of automated and another example, there could be more examples for automated like this one which it says Okay, so it's uh, taken across from the website itself. It says automated ad extensions improve the quality of your ad by adding additional information about your business to it, like links or changing its format. AdWords adds automated ad extensions to your text ads when it predicts that the extensions will improve. But I want to understand where does it really take it? 
from the entire content. It says if you have added ad extensions, a phone number, for example, if you have added extensions to your ad, whether it's a phone number, for example, or a link to your website, you can see how these extensions are performing. Just visits your AdWords account. Okay, this is measuring. Okay, uh, this is not the measurement. Automated extensions report. Here we go. It says you can use the automated extensions report to see more specific data for ads with automated extensions, like the number of clicks, impressions. Okay, I think this is the maximum amount of details which we can see about automated extensions. We don't really need to be worried more about this. I'll go ahead and look into the other portion of the campaign, guys, of Gorey's account. So. First of all, I'm gonna look at the campaign settings. So first of all, the campaign name. So let's move on, move ahead from, uh, move in the specific uh, account step by step. In the campaign section, we have got the budget being uh, punched in, the status, whether it's pause. Well, as of now, the ad hasn't run for, uh, hasn't run, so that's why we do not have any impressions or clicks being mentioned. No click through rate and no average cost in cost. Uh, but this is something which is uh, at the campaign level. Now also I would like to tell you guys, when we want a campaign report, I had shown you last time that we can go ahead and uh, download the campaign reports or an ad group level report and or the ad level report by going into this section which is called the download, right? Yeah, I think it was last time told by me. You can download as a PDF, you can download it across as an Excel sheet and an Excel sheet format. You can even go ahead and put in across a, uh, rule where the reports will get sent across automatic to, automatically to a specific email on a specific day of the week or do you want that daily to be sent across that can also happen so you want your reports to be downloaded and scheduled across let's say a pdf report and do you want all the segments or just a specific segment do you want to schedule a report uh, let's say to all the users so all the users in this case would be uh, Gorish is the main user who's the owner and I am the other user since I have got the access to it. So both the users will get or if there are any further uh, people who are uh, more than this. All right. So as you can see, there are two people who are uh, added on to this. Uh, the email can be sent across to both of them and so forth. Plus there are advanced uh, editing and so forth, which can be done. You can save this report as uh, a campaign report, whatever name you want to put that across, whether it's a PDF format and so forth. Now, also would I, uh, another thing which I would like to tell you, this report which we'll always have will feature in these matrices. If you want more matrices to be mentioned over here, you can just go ahead and click onto the column section. Click onto the column section and click onto modify column. As of now, the column uh, review which you can see right now over here, that's by the name of custom. So let's say I'm clicking on to modify column and I want to create a new column view of my choice and I'm gonna put in across some my name to it. Let's say I want uh, more things to be added on over here. So impression, interaction, interaction rate, average cost and cost, these are the things which are already there. Do I want more, more stuff? I can just uh, clear, you know, just drag it over there. Do I want campaign type also to be mentioned? So campaign time means either it's a search campaign, display campaign, video campaign, and so forth. All right, so I don't think there's any other thing which I need from here, from the performance level, let's say. I do I want clicks? Well, clicks uh, is something which is equivalent to interactions. I don't need a click-through rate. It's something which is equivalent to interaction rate. It's already there. Do I want total cost invalid clicks? So there are several things, guys, which can be there. And do I want invalid interactions? So the invalid is like if there are Two clicks for a specific impression, only two clicks will be counted, but not more than that. Do I want conversions? You know, if I have divide, if I have defined what is the conversion definition in my campaign, I can go ahead and uh, get that set up by getting into the tools section and then there is conversion. Uh, did I show you the conversion implementation, guys? How conversions are being set up? If not, then I'll go ahead and show you how, set, how conversions are being set up today. If you will set up a cross conversion, let me know whether that was being covered or not. It was not all right, I'll show you. So I assume as of now that the conversions have been set up. Now conversion definition could be any, whether the, uh, it can be like a, uh, a sale of a product on your website. Somebody comes on your website and purchase across something that could be defined as a conversion or a form fill up on your website could be counted as a conversion or maybe a, a form fill up or maybe a, 
what do you say? How do you view can be counted as a conversion and so forth? So let's say when we have set up the conversions, I do want to know not just the clicks which have happened onto my campaign, onto my ad, but I also want to know that out of all the clicks which have happened, how many of them got really converted? I do want to know how much cost I have to incur for my every single conversion. Let's say I want that also in my custom view. I also want to know what has been the conversion rate. Conversion rate, if I'll say, let's say out of 100 clicks, 10 people have got converted only. So my conversion rate would be 10%, right? My conversion rate would be 10% in that case. So with that and all that, so there are several other things which we need. Okay, let's say I want all of these in terms of attribution. Guys, give me one second. Right, so attribution, social matrix, and so many other things. Do I want my phone impressions? How many phone calls have I received and so forth? Now these are, this is quite a lot of stuff, guys. You're not getting much more deeper into that. I can go ahead and save across this entire column view. So my new column, which I can go ahead and name this across as a, a conversion-based column. So a column which shows me conversion values also, how many conversions have happened. That will come when I'll go ahead and choose this. So as you can see, this is the, I mean, these are the matrices which I've added on over here, right? I added the campaign type in front of you, search network, display network, it's showing me, conversions, how many happened, cost per conversion and conversion rate. Usually whenever we come onto an AdWords campaign, AdWords dashboard, in a very single glance, in a quick glance, we do need to know the status, like what has been the overall uh, updates, like what has been the overall, what I'd say, uh, overall performance. In order to check the performance, I need to know how many pro campaign, how many conversions happened, what was the cost per conversion, what has been the conversion rate. These are the things which we do need. That's why I put in across in this main column. Now, as you can see, this is being selected, guys, conversion-based column. That was my column name. All right, there could be furthermore things. I can segment this entire. So when, once I'll have traffic, once I'll have numbers over here, then I can use these things. I can go ahead and segment the reporting on the basis of devices. All right. So let's say total number of clicks which I receive from one single campaign is, I'm, I'm assuming, let's say it's 100. I will be able to see out of 100, how many did I, how many clicks did I receive from computer? How many clicks did I receive from mobile device and how many from tablets? Now this is a, a campaign guys, which uh, I have, this is an AdWords account, which is uh, not been, uh, you know, made live so far. In my previous session, I think I had uh, shown you a live campaign of my client's account, right? My client's account uh, was being taken across and then we had worked onto it and I had shown you the overall reporting part. Okay, so campaign, it's good, uh, Gaurish, and uh, uh, it was absolutely fine. In terms of ad groups, you've got two ad groups up. And uh, in fact, over here also, we can go ahead and modify the columns. I do want to know that every single ad group which is mentioned over here, what is the uh, conversion, let's say, level conversion for every single ad groups also. We can classify uh, the reporting from the ad group level. So not just the campaign level reporting can be segmented into different matrices, but overall, Various matrices report, various matrices to be added on to the reports can be, done, can be done at an ad group level, ad level and a keyword level also. It's just to understand that how overall ad groups are performing at individual levels, how campaigns and total, and even the performance of every single keyword, every single website where my display ad will also be there can also be known. Right, so same stuff can be done over here, same terms in terms of segment can also be done over here and so forth. So as of now, you're good with this. You've got your maximum CPC being defined. Now, if you remember, the bidding guys is only done across at two levels. One is the ad group and that's why you have the ad group level. At the ad group level, you've got the default bid set up. Now, whatever keywords which would be there underneath this particular search campaign, all the keyword default bid would also be two Indian rupees. Till the time you do not go ahead and change that. So the new agency, the new agency ad group guys, 
which is a search campaign basically which is a search campaign will have has got a default bit which being set up as 2 indian rupees if i'll go straight away to the keyword section you'll find all the keywords underneath this particular ad group name new agency having the default bid as 2 till the time you haven't changed it or right, so i can see koresh has gone ahead and changed the bids for every single uh, keyword right up over here so this is the ad group name new agency all over the place so we've got all the keywords underneath lpg or oh, sorry underneath new agency and the maximum cpc has been changed by gorish for each one of them right uh, only for this one this particular keyword gas agency the default ppc is 2 indian rupees probably he might not have changed for this one but he would have changed for all of these by going ahead and uh, making changes as you can see it says if you leave this blank if you leave this maximum cpc bid default bid to be blank then the, your ad group default bid would be taken across over here which is 2 indian rupees all right so this is all good uh, one thing i would like to tell you gorish that you haven't used across the match types i believe the match types were being explained we have covered that part right have we done the match types stuff what all different match types uh, are there the keyword match types i mean to say gorish and chitane you i hope you've been part of that session where we did cover across the match types do you remember that the keyword match types all right perfect chitanya for replying in and gorish i hope you also remember that if not then you always have the recording access right you have got the access to the recording we so do you want to recap that what all uh, match types we covered across does that ring a bell gorish the broad match broad modifier phrase match and the exact match right so i can go ahead and click right uh you know right next to the keywords right you can remember that perfect thanks gorish either we can pick and choose broad exact and phrase the other fourth match type which we covered was the broad modifier but it's not mentioned over here but we did understand what exactly should be how can we really go ahead and put that across by broad modifier can be implemented by typing in plus sign before these two words in your entire phrase if you want phrase match you can go ahead and pick and choose phrase match option from this drop down over here and similarly you can for another one you can use uh, let's say for exact match just click on to exact match and so forth right so these are the different match types guys so you can make effective use of those that's very important and even negative keywords uh, this negative keyword stuff can be only punched in when you have uh when you run your campaigns and you get to see in the dimensions tab how your overall how is the overall performance like your overall uh, campaigns performance was uh, i mean for what all search terms you got a click and so forth so it's so far so good uh, just the match types i have made you remember ad extensions i have uh, we have covered gorish with your account uh, campaigns and ad groups also i have seen let me just go ahead and uh, look at the settings option and then give you a more review of that all right so underneath the settings the first part is the location all right so you got all these location set up and that's good you can always go ahead and try with the radius targeting and so forth as you can see uh there is a report i mean you can go ahead and get across reports from here as well what all for what all different geographical locations your ad got triggered and so forth where your users were from which all particular locations you got the maximum conversions and so forth in terms of the ad scheduling also okay so i'm coming back to locations you can uh, go ahead and you know get up set up across columns right over here also and you can segment from this part also okay from the device and conversions and so forth going to the ad scheduling option this lets us know uh, the reporting the overall performance of our ads from the specific times which we are running across for specific day and time right so over here we've got all these options for which we have been running across our campaigns 
right? So Monday 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Tuesday 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., the performance for all of these thoughts would be there with us. If we do get to see that the performance is better on Mondays or it's better on Wednesdays, it makes sense to go ahead and punch in more money for that specific day. Right? Wherever you have any question, any doubt, feel free to punch in, punch your, punch in your question in the chat window so that I can go ahead and answer that. Aman, Chaitanya, Gaurish, wherever you have questions. All right, perfect. And then we can look at the devices option. We can get to see the performance of our devices right up over here as well, underneath the settings. So we are running across for all of the browsers, all of the uh, devices. As I can see, the bid adjustment is done minus 100 by you for computers, for the display campaign, and also minus 100 for tablets. Okay, maybe while showing you uh, this would have been done. And for mobile devices only, we want uh, you know, bid to be at the same level which is being kept. So we don't want our ads to be shown across on tablets. That's why we have gone ahead and decreased the bid for this. And similarly, we don't want our ads, our display ads to be shown across on computers as we only want for mobile devices with full browsers. That's why we've got no bid adjustment punched in over here. All right, so campaign, ad group settings, ads, ad extensions, keywords, it's all good. Underneath the audience, with the audience, uh, there's a display uh, thing which we get to know. Even in the display network, we get to see the display part. The audience uh, tab actually is there for the purpose of remarketing. Had I shown you the remarketing part, how the remarketing is being done across? For remarketing, we have to go ahead and create across an audience. Not really, okay. So. There are two things which we have to cover, uh, which is the process of remarketing and also how do we set up a cross conversions. So we'll, we'll do that, sure. Okay, so I think I have to, uh, I'll be going in and showing you remarketing right from the beginning only because there was a question from Goresh, I believe that the Display part is something which he wanted in a uh, recap on. You always have the recordings uh, which you can refer to. Now remarketing guys is done across. I hope the concept of remarketing is clear. With remarketing, we are able to showcase our display ads. Now display ad can be of three different ad types. Three different ad types are there, major ad types, which are shown across in the display uh, network. The display network consists of various different websites which are partnered with Google, right? Which are partnered with Google. And those websites which partner with Google are the ones who, which goes to Google AdSense pun, and they punch in across their overall, what do you say, details, right? That this is their website name and so forth, and they want to earn money. They want to earn money, they want to monetize across their traffic and so forth. With that being said, we can go ahead and create across the remarketing. I hope you remember remarketing is all about showing those three different ad types in the search network only and only to those people who have been to our website before, right? People who have been to our website before, we can go ahead and showcase them, showcase only to them the ads. Now, either we showcase only ads to those people who have been to our website or remarketing can be done in another way where we can showcase our ads in the search networks, websites which are part of the search network, to those we will be showing uh, ads to our end audience, not to the ones who are just uh, who have just been to our website before, but also to those who have been part of who have been to our YouTube channel before or to a mobile app before and so forth. So in order to get started with remarketing, I'm showing you the remarketing stuff. Go to the audience tab, click onto plus targeting. And here is, uh, here we have to go ahead and select the targeting, which is, I will select across uh, creation of an audience list. So there's something called audience. Over here, our audience is the one who have been to our website before. We only and only want to show our ads to them. All right, so we want to add it, add targeting to which campaign or an ad group. So this particular campaign, let's say, okay.
So we did have a campaign. Why is the other campaign not being shown over here? This is crazy. All right, so it's not showing me the ad group or the campaign, which is the display one. All right, sure, so then I can do that. All right, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and, uh, since your account is already running across, so I'll go ahead and do in yours, Chaitanya, sure. I hope that's not an issue with Flourish. So I'll go ahead and do that in your account, Chaitanya. And somehow the display campaign is not even coming up over here. Could be a temporary issue. Yes, absolutely, Gaurish. Yeah, you, we can, you can run across remarketing once your campaign will run. Absolutely. Otherwise, uh, once you will not have traffic, remarketing will not work. Okay, so I think this is good as of now with regards to your search campaign, Gaurish. I can jump into, absolutely. I can jump into Chaitanya's account. And Chaitanya, have you uh, worked on a display campaign also? Or it was just only a search campaign. Oh, you've done both. Okay, great. Let me just open that. You, okay, that's great. It's live. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, close the extra tabs. One, maybe a lot of tabs could be creating for us a lot of trouble with regards to the speed. Okay, so here we are and so the nails account is going to just open up in a second. Uh, but it's so my computer is getting charged right now. It's on the charge mode. All right, so my browser has been showing that there is some particular website which is making it go a bit slower. I'm not sure which website is that. Maybe just go to the other browser and see. All right, sorry about that, guys. Not sure why this is taking so much of time. My browser has been showing that there is one single web page, a website, which is causing this blue day. I'm not able to detect that. Maybe the best thing is to go ahead and close everything and run this only. But uh, nevertheless, I'll just wait for another few seconds. All right, so this is Chaitanya's account. I'm jumping on to campaigns tab to begin with. So we've got three campaigns which I can see right now. Yeah, Chaitanya, if you wish to. Well, well you can have that up. But I, think, I don't think uh, with, you, uh, with you being logged into it would cause any problem. So that's okay. You can still be there. Uh, you can still let let your AdWords account be open at your end also. It's okay. I think it's more important you look at them at your place also. Now, uh, at the campaign level, I, we can see this is the overall view. It tells us what's the average cost per click, how much has been the click-through rate. We understood what do we mean by click-through. It's the number of impressions divided by number of, uh, number of clicks divided by number of impressions multiplied by 100. That gives us click-through rate. 
or in a different words, we call it as an interaction rate. These have been the number of clicks. Now, other thing is, I am looking at all time reporting guys. We always have to keep in mind that we are seeing the reporting for what, which all days. Is it the last month? Is it the all time and so forth? I can even go ahead and compare it. Compare my, let's say, last one week's performance with the previous week's performance and so forth. And then over here, I can go ahead and we can set up across a conversion also if you wish to and we can go ahead and so in this particular search campaign so we've only got we've got only search campaign as of now which has been run so far these many impressions and so forth i would like to go ahead and make changes into the column the way i did for gorish's account also and i do want the conversions to be depicted so conversion cost per conversion and conversion rate to be part of it these are the major basic ones which I need. Otherwise, also average position I need. So I need to know where has my search ads have been like in terms of the position, what's been the average position. That's another thing which I do want. Campaign type also I need. Okay, on a broader level if I talk about. Okay, forget this. Any YouTube earned actions, not really. Competitive call details and so forth. I do not need that as of now. No social interactions. All right. So I think that's good. And I would also now call it as a conversion based layout, basically. Or you can name it across as whatever name, I mean, whatever name you want to give it across, you can. That's something which I do that. Conversion based layout is something which is my favorite. I always want to see the performance of. Uh, my entire advertising, my AdWords account into the column section. First of all, column re reporting, so the campaign reporting should show me the conversions also being received from campaign to campaign. You know, for one single campaign, how many conversions? And every conversion which I've received is costing me how much? So let's say I've got 10 conversions and uh, the 10 conversions price which I've paid across is let's say 1215. So almost 120 rupees, or you can say 121 rupees, I am going to be spending, I'm spending for every single conversion. I'm repeating again, I'm assuming that say my conversion value instead of zero is 10. So, and the total money which I have spent is 1215 rupees and 97 paisa. My one conversion cost, which is cost per conversion would be on an average 121 rupees for one conversion. How I got that figure? Total cost, which is 1215 divided by total conversion, which is 100. All right. Sorry, 10, not 100, 10. So that will give me 121 rupees and uh, 50 paisa or something. That would be my cost per conversion. And my cost conversion rate is going to be decided on the uh, two major matrices, number of interactions, which is clicks and also the conversion. So if I have got 10 conversions, out of total 62 clicks, my conversion rate would be 10 divided by 62, all right? Average position, guys, you can see it's been 2.1. Sometimes my, sometimes the ad would have been on the first position, sometimes uh, third, sometimes second, so all in all, or sometimes fourth, all in all, the overall average position has been taken for all the number of instances and the ad has appeared. 1,157 instances uh, were there when the ad appeared, and for all of these, 2.1 has been the average position, which is absolutely good. That's great. So with that being said, this uh, is about campaign. Then comes into, let's go into the, jump onto the ad group level reporting. At the ad group level reporting, we do see another new metric, which is the, per, uh, the bidding, right? The per click price, the maximum per click price, which we are willing to pay. Now in this, we have got, Three major ad groups mentioned over here. We've got only one ad group, which is live and which has been made live since we have got data for only one ad group over here. And that's part of the search campaign only. The default maximum cost per click, which we have kept for this ad group, for all the keywords which are underneath this ad group, it's 39 Indian rupees. Till the time we haven't really gone ahead and uh, changed the default bits for every single keyword underneath this uh, manually by, us, by, by ourselves. So 62 interactions again, 
five point so the, the same stuff interaction rate has been this average cost has been this and the total cost since we do not have a lot of uh, campaigns and a lot of ad groups underneath a particular campaign that's why the numbers are same guys that's why the numbers are same and now for this also we can go ahead and make changes to the column anytime chetan you can go ahead and change the column and make uh, create across a name you know type in across a name specifically for a particular column and so forth now with that being said you go ahead and move further and click on to the settings so you can go to the settings tab so it's so far so good with campaign and the ad group you can make changes to the ad groups column based layout also and if in case you want let's say reporting okay now i can show you the reporting how it goes across if i want campaign level reportings to be sent across to be scheduled across you can say okay before i do that i do want also a sort of a bar chart so a diagrammatic representation so you can click on to this and what all do i want in my bar graph i do want only clicks and do i want more than that clicks versus let's say the impressions <coughs> how has been the impressions and clicks okay this is the overall reporting now i want this as part of my reports i can go ahead and change this from impression i can change it to conversions to clicks or maybe the cpc cost which i'm paying whether it's going up and down and so forth and i'm clicking on to download the reporting and here i can either download it <coughs> which i'm clicking on to first of all the format which is pdf and then i want schedules to be done specific account users should get that so let's say i want chetanya to receive it across at what frequency i can type in that let's say daily basis weekly basis let's say on every sunday or every monday let's say he should get that i'm just creating it across okay you can uh, and this would be like campaign level report that's the name which would be there as a report name so the report name is campaign level report and so forth now this entire uh, report is being generated and download should begin shortly and so forth so download will begin for sure okay plus the overall uh, that particular rule has been set up okay i'm opening that across opening this so every monday chetanya is going to get across an email with the report at the campaign level report in such way in this kind of way it will show what's been the budget uh the campaign level budget what's been the name of the campaigns along with that the budget the status are they paused and are they played are they being played across the impressions interaction and so forth all of that you get that across in a pdf document all right so that's another thing campaign level ad group level reporting can also be done we were there on the ad group level and i was showing you that in the needs the ad group level you do get to see the bids so i don't know the bid is this much and so forth and then similarly okay going on to the settings tab now we saw this portion also let's go on to the settings tab all right now over here in the settings tab guys as you can see the first option which we can go for is the location the nat schedule and so forth as of now at a broader level at a broader level guys we've got from the settings tab we've got the budget the language the network the campaign started and the end date which we have kept so we have scheduled it for all the timing as of now for all the devices all right we have got it for all the devices i clicked somehow on that particular devices option and i can go ahead and make changes to the devices also all right so here we go the campaign name i can go ahead and change at any given point of time do i want to change the type do i want to change the networks do i want to show my ads on so on to 
uh, on this Google search partners site or just want to be on there on the Google search in the result page that's up to me okay and then the devices I can go ahead and change the device bit adjustment from here do I want the bid the maximum amount of uh, the maximum amount of money which I am ready to pay or invest in across for every single click for and so forth I can go ahead and make changes from the devices perspective all right so here's the bid uh, portion I can make bid adjustment right from here Give me a second. I can increase my bid for mobile browsers and so forth if I want uh, more preference to be given across to mobile devices I can do it right from here and so forth so device level settings Ad scheduling also can be done over here. All right, can you see the overall uh, performance, guys? From the performance perspective, we've got uh, cost per click to be lower for mobile. So, Chitanya, you this is a great sign. You got good number of clicks also coming from the mobile device. CTR also to be better for the mobile devices. Your average cost per click also coming up to be higher, right? And majority of your uh, money which you have spent in across that's also higher uh, I mean your ads are being shown more for the mobile devices I think it would be good if you go in and uh, not uh, focus more on the computers and tablets as you can see the average CPC is higher for these two as compared to this one but more more uh, uh, you know more inputs you can get about the performance of uh, all these devices performance of your ads and all these devices when you have the conversion data also with you now I'll, I'll just have a look at what to which page are you trying to send across people to okay and on that particular page do you have a specific action for them to perform what's the conversion thing which you are really expecting from them all right so this is the devices and it's all good as of now again you can make changes to the column section to whichever way you want to Ad scheduling, location, all settings have been done. Let's jump on to the ad section now. Now here in the ad section, what we can see, this is the overall advertisement. I can go ahead and click on to edit. I'm clicking on to edit and here's the URL. Here's the landing page URL. I'm copying this, okay? And I'm opening this page in a new tab. All right, so the web page is opening up. Just give me a few seconds. All right, so like I said, there is something guys, which is uh, working on the back end of my laptop, which is leading to all these things coming in slowly. <coughs> Excuse me. Change. This is taking a lot of time. Uh, I'll just try to use it across a different browser. Okay. This. Okay, that's great. So you got a. You got a landing page up with the. With a form fill up thing, right? You got a form fill up. That's great, Chitanya. Amazing. 
Now, with regards to this advertisement, with regards to this campaign, what is the conversion? How are we defining the conversion? Whenever somebody comes onto this web page and takes an extra effort to go ahead and submit across his or her detail, the form fill-ups would be defined across as a conversion in this in this uh, scenario, right? In this particular campaign, the de the definition of a conversion is a form filler. Perfect. Or is there a thank you page? Now, my another question is. Is there a thank you page which comes up after a form is being filled up? Let's try to do that. I'm just doing a test. All right. I'm just trying to do a test uh, lead, a test form fill up. Now, this is the URL which is coming up over here. I want to make sure that the uh, thank you page should be a different URL. The moment I click on to submit, let's see what happens. All right, so here's this URL, which is a separate URL, right? Now, if in case we want people to, uh, you know, we want conversions to be set up, Conversions to be calculated across. Uh, there is going to be a conversion code, Chaitanya, which you would have to send across to the developer to submit that conversion code on this particular page, which says page ID is equal to 2350. On this page, which is the thank you page, on this page, there has to be a conversion tracking code, which you would have to get it implemented so that in your AdWords account, in your AdWords account, the conversion values do get recorded by Google AdWords. That's how Google AdWords is going to get connected with your uh, you know, website and Google AdWords is getting information that whenever there are people going onto this particular URL after they have clicked onto your ad, you want this particular stuff, you want this particular conversion value to be shifted from zero to one and then one more and so forth and so on. Now, how do we get to how do we set up? Now I'm just drifting away from the ads tab as of now. I'll come back to the ads tab uh, in a while. What I'm trying to show you now that how do we set up across this conversion stuff? What do you have to do? You have to click onto tools and then go to the conversion section. All right, so I'm repeating again. We have to go to the tools section and then click onto the conversion and that's what it's appearing right now. The screen which we're gonna see right now, it's gonna be the conversion setup screen. And as we just spoke right now, that whenever we want people to come, uh, you know, whenever we want traffic on our website, we're just not looking for people to come on our website and do nothing. We do want, we do want them to go ahead and uh, do some activity onto our website. Whether we want them to just uh, go ahead and sign up for an email newsletter, or we do want them to go ahead and purchase across a product or some form fill up kind of a thing, which is a overall functionality of form fill up is uh, overall a lead uh, creation or a lead uh, <clears throat> development process altogether. And then there is the uh, uh, a question from Chaitanya. Chaitanya says, why is it showing campaign will end soon? Because in your ad scheduling, Chaitanya, you probably might have put in across the end dates to be uh, of nearby, I mean, it would be very nearby approaching across. I think your end dates were somewhere close to 31st. Okay, not sure. It was not that. Do you want me to look at? But it says one campaign ending soon, you keep your ads running by extending your campaign end dates. Your end dates, Chaitanya, your end dates. Okay, promotional offers has been mentioned and 
you want to look at the end dates before I jump on to the conversion setup. Some serious issue, guys. I have tried to stop that across also. What I did, I just clicked onto that campaign end date stuff and it's showing me All right, I think if today it's not gonna really not gonna let us work on it. This is I think it's either with the zoom or it's with what it's causing a lot of delay. All right, see uh, the end dates for this. If I'll go to the settings tab, then only I'll be able to see. All right, see the campaign end date is 31st, that's why. Right? That's why it's saying campaign end date. It's campaign ending soon, that's why. Make sense? This is the reason, okay? It took us a lot of time to actually come up to this particular part. I'm going on to the tools section again. All right, so I'm going on to the tools section and clicking on to conversions. Right. Now what we're going to see is uh, what we're going to be doing right now is the conversion setup, guys. Onto our website, what are we looking at as a conversion? We are looking uh, at, we're looking at more number of form fill-ups, right? With that being said, that's what we want to be set it up over here. Okay, so I can see it's been set up already by you. Uh, haven't you really? So I think we covered this part. So that's something which I uh, 
was I was not able to recall that, but I, I, you guys can see it's already been covered by me in the past. So I'm clicking on to plus new conversion. Let's try to create a conversion straight away. Let's recap this. Oh, you have set it up. Okay, perfect. Now here, what we need is, we need to track across the form fill-ups, right? We need the form fill-ups to be set up. So I'm clicking on to website portion. And now we're gonna put across a name to it which says, so let's say the form fill up. The form fill up for a particular page, let's say which is, let's say the inquiry form. Now my name of my conversion is inquiry form fill up. Now is there a specific value do I want to really place against this? That's up to me when I will be going ahead and looking into my campaign. I, all, I do want to know that I do want to know how is it performing and so forth. Uh, I mean, how much money or you can say is it providing me? I do get, I do want to know that I want, I can go ahead and put across a, a sign across a value to it. I know this is not a monetary stuff. There is nothing which is getting sold right now, but still in terms of, uh, you know, monitor, you know, we can go ahead and specify a specific, uh, a specific, we can specify a particular value to every conversion that happens. Whenever there is a conversion, we want to, let's say, say that it is worth 100 Indian rupees. Every single conversion I can say, it's worth 100 Indian rupees. With that being said, I'm clicking on to done. Now, let's say uh, I have an e-commerce website. For my e-commerce website, uh, not every product is gonna be same. So I can go ahead and assign across different value for different products. For that, I have to click onto transaction specific value and there's a customization being done. So that's done separately. As of now, we are jumping on, we are moving ahead with this same example which we are doing right now. I'm clicking onto done. Now, do I want every conversion to be counted as a conversion or do I want so what, what exactly the count thing means, guys, is let's say somebody comes onto my website after clicking onto the ad, you know, after an ad has been clicked, uh, let's say the key keyword search term has been typed in, the ad appears, and there's an, uh, there are clicks onto my advertisement. Out of all those people who have clicked onto the ad and come onto my website, not everybody will fill up the form, right? Not everybody is going to fill up the form. With that being said, what's happening is, uh, I am uh, looking at getting to know only th about those people who have filled up the form, right? How many people have filled up the form? That's okay. But there can be certain instances when not just one person will fill up the form once. There can be one particular visitor who might fill up the form, let's say three times. I'm just taking an example. If one student is coming onto my web page uh, by after clicking onto my ad and he fills in three times my form. Will that particular uh, situation, in that particular situation, will Google AdWords show me three conversions or will it show one conversion? Well, that's up to me. Whether I want this to be counted as, uh, every single one to be counted as a unique conversion, in that case, three conversions, three form fillers will be counted as three conversions. This one actually works across, uh, this one is much more valid for e-commerce website. In the e-commerce website, what happens is if somebody comes on, uh, jumps onto the website after clicking onto the ad, he might purchase three things or he might purchase one thing. Now, what do we really want? Do we want the, what do you say, uh, the conversion tab to show us three conversions because there were three products being purchased by one customer or does, do we want that conversion column to show us one conversion because only one particular uh, customer purchase, no matter how many purchases he did. So let's say I want uh, every conversion to be counted over here and I click on to done and conversion window, do I want the conversion values to be there for the last 30 days or 60 days or 90 days? I can go ahead and put it across as 90 days, okay? 
So from ad clicks or the search, uh, from the search or the display clicks, I do want my conversions to be shown across for the last 90 days from an ads, basically from clicks point of view. Over here, we're not working on impressions, so that's why we can leave that blank. View through impressions, it's view through clicks. What category is this? This is a form filler for a lead generation, so we'll select lead. Do we want the data which will come across in the conversion tab? Yes, we do want that. So include the data in the conversion action in the conversions, all right? Now you can leave the attribution model to be, uh, by default, the last click model. This is something very different, guys, uh, which maybe I can explain you when we'll cover the Google Analytics part. So we do have Google Analytics as another module, which we'll cover later on. So let's click on to save and continue. Now over here in the conversion windows section, what you can see, it says, see your conversion. Uh, okay, not this one. This is the one, all right. The conversion tracking, uh, conversion tracking, uh, code, basically the code, which has to be put in across in that thank you page, which came in. So Chaitanya, what you would have to do is you have to email across, you will have to email across the instructions. So click on to email instructions and tag. Do you have a, what do you say? The email address uh, Chaitanya of your developer, I can send it across to your developer straight away, or I can go ahead and send it to you as of now. The email will be uh, sent across. All right, you have that. So I'm writing in the comment section, please implement this Google conversion tracking code on this web page. The web page URL is also being mentioned, which is the Thank you page, right? And here's the email address, which I'm typing because B A R M A at the rate E T H A M E S dot A C dot in. Now, what's going to happen, Chitanya, from my email address, which is this one? Uh, do you want me? Do you want me to? Uh, do you want uh, to give across your email address? You want any reply on this particular email? Maybe yours. So the email will go with the instructions from my particular email address in this case, since I'm logged in. All right, so it's okay. Shall I let this be there? Okay. Let's go ahead and then send it across. Now, what is this tracking code? Where has to be pasted across? In the body section, in between the body section. So, you know, every web page has got a source code. We understood this source code stuff in our search engine optimization module also, right? So over here, what you can see, there is this uh, entire Google tracking code, which is right over here. That has to be pasted across in the body tab. This has to be pasted across in the body tab for that particular web page which we spoke about. And then click on to done. Now you know what will happen? Okay, it says congratulations, you're ready to start measuring your conversions and let's click on to done. This is unverified. I think your other one is also verified, I believe so. Because it says no recent conversions, not saying unverified. You have already done this uh, tagging, I believe so. If you've already done so, uh, don't do it again. Don't have multiple ones. Just have one of those to be presented over there. Hope it makes sense. So what I'm gonna do now, so that brings us to the end of the conversion uh, thing, which we have to understand. I'm going back to the campaigns.
All right, it's taking again some more time, guys. Uh, The only thing which will really uh, get this corrected is just a restart of the laptop. I believe there's something which is working at the background that's not letting it move so better. All right, so we'll. Uh, in your place, my ad is coming or not. I, I would have to check that. You guys are, are in Delhi. I, I'll have to check by typing it across your the keywords. Do you want a break or shall we, I mean, we'll be wrapping it up another 20 minutes. So we'll just go ahead and uh, cover up the remaining thing, which is the remarketing today. And then we can, uh, right, so I think that would be better. Tomorrow, what time, guys, do you want to you think? Uh, 6.30 is fine or 2.30 is is, apps, is good. So today, just because of certain reasons, I had to postpone it. Two thirty is fine, all right. Okay. All right, so I think there was some issue with the audio. All right, so the campaign tab is still loading up. Strange, I think uh, what we can do, guys, I'm not sure why is this happening across this crazy. I just try logging in from a different browser. It could be a browser, browser issue, right? It could be a browser issue. I'm just trying to open from a different browser right now.
All right, so we are back. We are at the same page. And oh, all right, so the, the number is actually picked up. So instead of 67 now, we have got 70 clicks and the overall cost has increased. Right, it's just that we do need to make sure that the conversions are being set up. Conversions should be there, uh, verif verified across. Then only we can understand. Now over here, I can only tell you about the remarketing, uh, Chaitanya, about the remarketing stuff when you have the display campaign be set up across perfectly. So, and on your display campaign being run across. So, I want you to go ahead and run across your display campaign also for, for a few days and then uh, if you wish to. I mean, that's there's no hard and fast rule over here. When you'll run across your display campaign, then you'll you will run it, all right, perfect. Then we'll implement across the remarketing stuff. All right, so before we wrap up our session for today, any specific other queries, questions you have, feel free to put that across. I'll just go ahead and look into your other sections meanwhile. So add extensions, I hope uh, the way I've explained for uh, into Gaurish account that was being clear. Now, as of now, you, you're running across for all keywords on broad. So the keywords for which you're running your ads, it's all on broad. Uh, you can try utilizing various other keywords. Let me show you for which all keywords have you got your ads being shown. If you want to see uh, the search terms for which your ad has been shown, you have to click onto the dimensions tab and then click onto view and then search terms. View and then search terms. Now, this is what you can see uh, your ads are appearing for. Right, Chaitanya? So anybody who is typing in Amity Hyderabad BBA fee structure, one click you have received from here. For BBA, you have received two clicks and nine impressions and so forth. BBA payment, payment seats in Hyderabad. Here are the keywords for which, and they all are on broad. You do have one of the keywords. These are the... These are not keywords, I would say. These are the search terms which people did and your ad appeared for these. So if you remember the match types, I hope you remember the match type stuff. Right, so you have to make sure that you uh, get the match types uh, utilized in a perfect fashion. So VBA colleges in Hyderabad, you had that particular keyword in exact and then your ad got shown for seven times. I mean, seven times you got received a click and the overall cost per click in that case was 14 rupees and BBA course pictures. So now this is one, uh, you know, keyword, which Chaitanya, you might say that this is an unrelated one. It says BBA girl hostels in Hyderabad, I believe, even this is an unrelated one. So you can put across girls, hostels, girls, uh, pictures, these words in the negative. Are you getting me? Where are you? I mean, the negative terms, the negative one, uh, the negative words, overall ideas, you usually get it across from these search terms only. I hope you understand that these words, BBA girls, hostels in Hyderab Hyderabad, BBA course pictures, I'm assuming, are not related to what you offer, right? So maybe putting across the word pictures, putting across the word hostel, hostels, girls, I mean, these should be put in across in this negative one. It says best business schools in Hyderabad. Absolutely, it will affect CTR and unnecessarily you are paying for these keywords which are not going to give you uh, conversions. See the BBA course pictures, has costed you 24 rupees and ultimately you're not getting, uh, you might not get conversions. As of now, conversions have not been set up. Make sure the conversions get set up and you'll be able to see for which all particular search term you got conversions, right? And your average position is also mentioned for all of these keywords. In terms of the region, when you were saying, uh, whether it's showing across for my region and so forth, the, we can check that. But let's try to see for which all specific geographical region your ads has been getting across the maximum clicks.
so what i did dimensions and in terms of view i've got uh, i've selected geographic so maximum clicks so i'm clicking on the clicks option and let's try to see here is the overall descending order so maximum clicks you have received from hyderabad all together so hyderabad hyderabad this particular zip code the the 85008 is giving you has given you three clicks 502032 has this particular zip code is giving you two has given you two clicks so majority of uh, the clicks which you have received they all are from the hyderabad location all the different zip codes right you know when you will have the data in regards to conversions also chetanya you will be able to make a judgment that you're getting maximum conversions let's say from this specific zip code let's try to push in across this specific zip code to be much more you can go ahead and increase your bids for a specific geographical location also you know you always go ahead and increase your bids for those specific uh, uh things those specific keywords those specific timing those specific search terms those specific geographical location which have been giving you conversions right when you go ahead and get to know all those things which are giving you conversions things which are common in all your conversions you take that across extract that and put in across in a new campaign or an existing campaign only right they'll always help you they'll always help you from uh, achieving much higher return on investment all right so uh, tomorrow guys we'll start with hopefully the video portion all right the video ads uh, we'll see right absolutely it's going to be video ads and then uh, from monday to friday then i'll uh, i will uh, go ahead and expect from you to create across the search ads the display ads and also the video ad and uh, if you're willing to run it across that's good we'll be going ahead and reviewing them further more and so forth right makes sense so any last questions comments guys for delhi it's not coming across if you still want to check well uh, you can you know if you want to check that across without affecting your see click through rate so then you have to go ahead and click on to tool section and then click on to add preview tool so click on to add preview tool if you want to check the ad is coming across for a specific location even if you are not there even if you are not there still you can or right, give me a keyword for which your ad is uh, running right now and it's uh, getting clicks best pb colleges in hyderabad all right so i'll you can go ahead and select across the location all right so that's what you can do uh, this is for everyone if in case you want to check the overall uh preview of your keyword for a specific location so let's say if you have punched in delhi new delhi uh, is the place for which you are running the ad so you can go ahead and select that all right so new delhi is being selected and this for this specific location we want to check english desktop and laptop uh do you want to check for mobile tablet or desktop or laptops that's also there for which devices are you running it across i think you're running it for all of them so let's check for desktop or laptop laptops as of now and the search term which you want me to check for is best pba college in hyderabad or best pb colleges in hyderabad all right so when we type in best pb colleges in hyderabad your ad is showing up yes it is can you see this and it shows which one so that's correct so chetani you can always do a check like this it shows that here is the ad for best pba colleges so anybody who is typing in best pba colleges in hyderabad in new delhi is getting to see your ad 
right? Isn't that a great learning? Perfect. So thanks everyone for being part of the session today. And I believe there was a great review, a, a wide review in terms of what all you have performed and what all things you can do. Uh, Gaurish Chaitanya, looking forward to meet across tomorrow's 2.30 uh, p.m., right? Uh, and there won't be any changes in the timing this time. I'm sure about that. And Aman, is there anything which you want to ask? Uh, Chaitanya, Gaurish, if there's anything which you want to ask, you can let me know within the chat window so that I can go ahead and uh, reply it then and there. All right, thanks, uh, Chaitanya. And thanks, Gaurish. Aman, anything from your side? Are you good, Aman? All right, perfect. Thanks, everyone, for being part of the session today, and we'll be meeting for us tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. onwards. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>